actually very, oh! very... It's... <laughs> it's back! Hello, everyone, or hello to you. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast called Got Some, a podcast where we are trying to find the best bottle of $30 or less wine in Australia um, as judged by a master sommelier. His name is Carlos Santos. He sits next to me. He's my co-host, now friend. We met as we met as people, strangers on the internet, and then uh, now I now genuinely consider this bloke a mate, and um, I consider you my mentor of wine. Oh, thank you. That's very nice of you. Um, if you want to learn from Carlos, you can, of course, just listen to the podcast, or he does teach WSET courses, um, so we'll put a link below so you can get uh, your level one, two, or three like I did, um, which gives you a bit more accreditation. You know, as much as it's nice to go to a wine store and say, Hey, I'd like a job. Oh, what's your uh, credentials? Oh, I'm 46 episodes into Got Some. Uh, <laughs> WSET does also look good on the resume. That's right. This episode is really special um, for a couple of reasons. One, coming up, I have picked a wine that on paper looks very similar to our current number one, mm-hmm. the Chateau Haut Madrac. Mm-hmm. But we'll find out in minutes if that's the case. Now, We are trying Mm -hmm. the Chateau Haut Madrac. But the reason we are doing it is the one that is currently leading both of our leaderboards, number one in both of our eyes over 45 plus episodes, was the 2017 vintage. And Dan Murphy's just released the 2018, which we have in front of us. So I just thought it will be interesting to compare to see where it's at versus the 2017. So let's, it's going to be a very quick version of it because we have a full episode. Um, you know, we have a full assessment of a wine coming up, but let's go through this, Carlos. You've already mm. opened it up and had a smell. What do you think? Yeah, well, actually, very, oh! very... It's, <laughs> it's back! Yeah, it's very interesting because uh, it seems like this guy's doing something very well. I think he's very consistent. Uh, straight from the nose, I was like, oh, this smells... It's back! It smells, it smells like the drag. So, uh, of course, you know, in Bordeaux, I think Bordeaux is uh, one of these regions that you really, really see uh, diversity in vintage. One vintage is not like the other. So, look, I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed with On this one. On the nose, one. yeah. Uh, I feel like this one has even a little oh, bit more so intensity, good. a little bit more intensity on the nose than even the 17 had. Um, oh, it's, it's so good to be back with it. Black it's, currant, it's a lot of It smells black. so good. Yeah, very good, yeah. Well, cheers to this. Cheers. I think it will, uh, I think it will maintain the the spot again honestly like oh. i feel like there's even more intensity on the nose than there was on the 17 this is the smell flavor the same aroma profile the same flavor profile but i feel like um, this is more intensity so it's unbeatable I- it's it's on the palate it's it's wonderful the tannins are balanced they're fine mm. it's not that grippiness that pulls your teeth down um the acid is high mm. um well not high but you know medium plus yeah medium it's, plus it's balanced mm. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I couldn't blind taste the difference between 2017 and 2018 like you could. Mm. Um, but what I can tell you is it's still delicious. Mm. Yeah. That's palette, so good. Palette wise, I really like the, um, when you have a sip, it's like, it's mouth tingling, you know, that you feel the acidity, um, you feel the, the black fruits stinging almost on a palate, um, lifted acidity, um, complexity there's the black fruits there's a touch of purple flowers there's a touch of um leathery oh, um it's got everything for our people watching this on instagram and on youtube we're about to do a magic trick we are about to transform this bottle into oh and just like that we have got another chateau chateau la grande Verduce. This is a wine that I picked because I'm like, Carlos and I both agree the Chateau Hall Madrac Mm -hmm. is the best wine that we've had so far. But I picked a wine that is on paper similar, a mix of Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot from France, from Bordeaux. Mm -hmm. It says Bordeaux Superior. It is actually 80% Merlot, so it's a little bit different. So it will be different. Blend. I mean, it will be different because they're different. You would expect it to be different, yeah. But this they are one... the same vintage that we just had. We had the 2018 Chateau Homodrac. This mm-hmm. is a 2018. Yeah, it's a inter- always an interesting comparison uh, because 
because the other one is a, bl a blend of, of almost of uh, Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot. This one is mainly Merlot. And also because the Omadrac is a higher uh, classification, is a Cro Bourgeois. So uh, therefore as well, you know, you expect it to be perhaps a little more expensive. You expect it to be a higher quality overall. Uh, but then again, it really depends what these guys were um, meant to do and what they actually wanted to achieve out of this wine. So sometimes you find really good surprises. So hopefully it lives up to the expectation, I guess. Well, they are similar, yet as Carlos has explained, different. Um, there is a big difference as well, which is I always feel like a bottle of wine that has a cork in it. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. Uh, look at this, it's like... Mm, yeah, screw, screw top. top. Yeah, I was yeah. like, Bordeaux, screw top. It's like, what are you... Bit of a kick to the face to the old world, you know? Mm. I mean, but mind you, it's the price point, but the Chateau Homadrac still manages to fit in and they're priced, mm -hmm. I think they're the same price. Mm. So, right, That's an, that's that would be the next one, yeah. What's the difference price? Okay, well... um oh, cracked you, it. You don't want to have it them side by side to uh, compare? Or we will need our producer Amelia to come and just give me a little bit of a fill. Or shall I take it off? Oh, no, please, that, uh, please. I like, I like where your head's at. So that's all my drag for both of us. That's and all my drag. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. 100%. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Is... <laughs> <laughs> when you smell, okay. when you smell wine one, uh, if you, if sorry, you one is like yes. Okay. But then again, his grape variety is mostly Merlot, uh, so therefore you expect something a little bit different, less compacted, maybe a little bit wider, a little bit more red fruit as well, which there is. Will the Oma Drac blend of 50-50 almost uh, Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot, you expect it to be a little bit more compacted, a little bit more black fruit, uh, which that that's, yeah, that's that's good for what they are. Yeah, All right, okay. so how do you want to start colors off the color? Well, yeah, off the color, and I think it's a good a good exercise to do maybe, you know, really side by side and compare both wines. Straight off the color, um, the uh, Grand Verdus or Grand Verdu, uh, it's a little bit paler. If you turn them into a, against a white background, it's a little yeah. bit paler, it's a little bit more red tones and even more staining into the tears. Uh, a little bit leaves a residual of red color while the uh, Oma Drac being a little bit dark, a little bit more concentrated, actually is a more purple, a little bit more purple tears. In terms of alcohol, I mean, or in terms of uh, thickness of the tears, they're actually very similar. So probably, you know, I'm tempted to say 14, 14 and a half percent on both, pretty much. Um, 14, yeah, 14 percent, that's fine. That's that's typical for, for the wine. Uh, on the nose, I think it's yeah. on the... On the Appearance is all set on well, the nose. Well, we know what Chateau Homadrac is. We've spoken about it already. Very, oh! very... It's... <laughs> it's back! So let's just concentrate on Grand Verdu. Yeah, on Grand Verdu. Nose. Nose, it seems a little bit uh, wider open uh, from the get-go. More red fruit, more uh, ripe strawberry, ripe raspberry, uh, touch of black fruit as well, touch of black currant, black plum. Um, and... and but I think really the major, uh, it's it's the red fruit, like that's um, cherry, red cherry, all super ripe red cherry, red plum, a lot of plum. And then I think there's a touch of smokiness as well. Uh, chard, chard wood, a little bit of uh, bell pepper. Uh, there's a touch of pyrazine. Uh, in the, pyrazine? Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, that's, sorry. Pyrazine is bell pepper. It's uh, oh. it's a... Uh, it's a, an enzyme that um, it's an enzyme that comes from the uh, from the bell pepper. Sorry, that's a, a quite a a hard term. Uh, I think it's, you said it. We 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 drink the all, enzyme from a bell pepper. We are we How are. How do you smell an enzyme from a bell pepper? <laughs> that's madness. It's, it's after all these wines. Uh, now it's um, all those terms are kind of. But I, I feel like it's not as balanced. I don't feel like it's as integrated uh, as the Oma Drac, which is overall a more beautiful nose. Much more nose. beautiful. Beautiful yeah. is the word it is. It's um, yeah, much more complex, finessed, mm. beautiful, yeah. here, floral. Here it feels like um, there is distinctive red fruit, black fruit, a distinctive um, little bit of wood. I'm not sure if there's oak or not, but I feel like there's a touch of smokiness and charred, like uh, charred peppers 
um, which it feels like this compact, it feels like these fruit packets and each of these are in a different packet. Well, with the Omega Drag, it feels like everything is together in the same packet and is much more pleasant. But anyway. All right, let's palette. try it on the palette. Cheers. It's it's yeah it it's the acid is more the alcohol is more present in this one. Mm. Mm -hmm. Alcohol is mm -hmm. like less integrated and maybe it's about the same. Uh, um, fourteen, fourteen and a half. Yeah, I take they will be the same. But it, it does it, the balance of yeah. the Chateau Homodrac yeah. means you obviously don't get that searing alcohol. Whereas mm. this one's like it doesn't taste like a spirit, but it does have that yeah. sort of al big alcohol. Mm. Yeah, and also I, I really think is the uh, overall uh, overall complexity of the wine. As I said, this one feels a little bit uh, uh, disattached. Um, nothing is really in balance, in my opinion, on this wine, um, and um, and it's just it just doesn't feel very uh, very pleasant. I don't. I think even the nose, if is wider, it's open as I was said, is very um, separated, like. The, the aromas you can distinguish very very well the aromas which is doesn't give me a sense of complexity doesn't give me a sense of um um of something that i really enjoy drinking and opening and even decanting perhaps i think it will just destroy the wine you need to open it serve it and drink it you know uh so if this is worth 30 bucks mm. what do you think the chateau is worth put a money on it well, you mean I uh, just in, compared to? Let's say this people are paying thirty dollars happily for this. How what, much would you pay for the? Madrak? What would you happily pay for the Madrak oh, in yeah, quality? At least, at least another fifteen dollars. I think so. Yeah, forty-five, fifty dollars. I mean, it's a big jump. It's a big jump when you. Think, I don't think it's big. You know, it's a, it's a big jump when you think if you are in France. Uh, well, we're in Australia, obviously, so you need to consider that as well. But um, yeah, that's true. Have to pay for the uh, uh, import of it and all of that. Yeah. So is it fair enough to say? What do you I feel just, better about me saying this is fifteen? Yeah. And that's okay. thirty. That's right. Yeah. I think that's more, that's yeah. Because if you go, obviously, this is a wine that is widely available in Australia. I still think the Chateau Homadrac is paying above dollar. Yeah, I think if you consider that this is fifteen, then that one thirty is is good. These guys are making a lot of money on this wine. If they are pricing the same as the Homadrac, the Homadrac is. Put more effort, has put more even even on the cork. I mean, whether it's, yeah. it's not an amazing cork, but uh, definitely this is much more expensive than this. Um, and that refl everything reflects on the wine. So if they are the same price, they are making a ton of money in this wine. Oh, sorry, I think it's the first. No, one. I like Probably it. That's where don't. I, I like it. But uh, but I would if they are the same price, I would not pay for this bottle of wine. I'm clicking it on the Dan Murphy's Lincoln Quarry border. Oh, I've made a big mistake. It's a seventeen dollar bottle of wine. Seventeen. Okay. Well, that's fair then. Okay. Sure. That's fair. Okay. Then. I, I thought it was more expensive. I mean, I did buy a bunch of bottles. Well, once. but that's that's seventeen bucks. But that makes sense. That's great. That that's makes great sense. For, okay. It's great to compare and it's great to um, to approach it this way because this is very important and that's why you pay the different price for different wines. This you know? is a great that's, example yeah. of what the difference of fifteen dollars yeah. is. Uh, but it's half the price at yeah. the end of the day. But, but again, it, it's not. It's a big jump. It's been a great exercise as well for people who don't understand the difference between that jump because there is so much complexity in that mm. jump um, now that we do actually confirm the price of it.